I hope you're doing well today. Um, I'm certainly doing well. It's been about like a week or something that I did one of these. Anyway, today's sermon is called Falsely Free. And why I why I put the sermon after it, I'm actually planning on doing a story later today about um, a story time Sunday edition um, about with the same title so I didn't want them to get confused although my story time Sunday will be on YouTube and this is on Facebook but I put story time Sunday the sermon so you guys know this is actually a sermon um, and story time Sunday the story will be on YouTube hopefully later today um, this Let's pray. Father, I, I praise you and I bless you. Lord Jesus, fill my mouth with what you would have me speak. Speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus. Let your word, very word, permeate the essence of my spirit and the spirit of everyone watching. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, this sermon came about in the strangest way probably ever um i was watching a preacher well let's say this i was in church on sunday i don't i don't call it watching church i call it in church but by a different medium um so so like cuz some people say i'm watching church no you're not watching you're in church and you're participating and worshiping or whatever I I hope online church is like that for you um, it's certainly like that for me so I was in church on Sunday and the preacher uh, just offhandedly said um, was talking about uh, Columbia House and for those of you youngins like who don't know what Columbia House was. Columbia House was an ordering service that you could order movies and music and way back and and um way back when when I was a kid, uh we used to order a lot of movies. And what they would use to use um, to hook you was you'd get the first six movies and music for free and then and then they would send you a bunch of stuff and after you got those first six movies uh, for free and you would have to um, then they would send you movies or music that you don't want so this pastor was talking about um, about um, Columbia House and how uh, he he got his well in his case it was CDs how he got these first CDs for free and then they sent him um, things that he didn't want. <laughs> So, um, and it was funny, because I love pop music, but this person is, like, a rock kind of person. He's like, he's like, um, well, they sent me this person, they sent me this artist, and, and I was like, what? And they sent me this artist, and I was sitting there going, Because I am totally a pop person, an R&B person. I would have loved that because I love those people. And, um, and I, I remember them sending, sending to our house, um, I think some kind of heavy metal things that, uh, that we weren't interested in in our house. Um, and I said, we, we should have switched. Um, uh, yeah, so, 
and it got me thinking of um, where um, you you kind of you know you kind of start something for one reason thinking that you don't have to pay anything at all and then you end up paying through your nose anyway um, have you ever I've been in the situation where uh, you sign up for a site and they say uh, six m or they say one month free trial and then you use it for one month and you're like this is great and then they start and then they start charging you without you even remembering that they that the month is over, or you're like, and the, the, or the thing may be terrible, and you're like, this sucks, and so you kind of forget about it, and then you look at your bill, and you, you look at your bank account, and you put, um, and they took the money out without you realizing it, and then you start paying without you realizing it. Sometimes with sin, that's how it's that's how it is. You start um, you start with one thing, like let's say you tell a little lie or you gossip about this person a, a little bit. And then you don't get caught, so you don't really have to pay anything. And something else happens to that same person, and you gossip a little more, and a little more, and a little more. And all of a sudden, you you find yourself in, like, the worst situation. And you wish, why did I even say anything to start with? And, you know, sometimes it's hard because you kind of, you kind of don't mean to be malicious, but you're kind of like, oh my god, how could that person do that? And you're like, oh. and then it starts to be totally, um, it starts to be totally like, it starts off as something innocent, but then... It spirals. It's like a a snowball, which starts small, and then you roll, and then you roll until it gets so big that you can't see your way home. And um, and that's why I'm saying that's why I called this thing falsely free, which means you actually um think it's no big deal or it's free or something and then you end up paying without even knowing it. You pay with your self-esteem. You pay with your self-respect. You pay with your, you know, integrity. And a lot of people have sold out and paid so much for being dishonest and just hustling and people are like oh I need to get the hustle I need to get the hustle I need to get places but then they they don't realize that they they sell out on one thing and then they give up their whole integrity and it's just um it's not free you have to like you end up paying so much in the end it seems free but you end up paying with your integrity you end up paying with your spiritual life you end up paying with your you know um with your with your church attendance let's say you took a job um because you really have to you real you really have to work and you have to pay your bills. So you you took a job that you had to work on Sundays. 
so you kind of um no you, you you took a job thinking that you would and you told your boss I can't work on Sundays and it's like a nine to five thing and your boss says okay we won't it's nine to five Monday to Friday so you won't work on Sundays so but uh, one weekend someone your boss says oh can you do this little assignment on at home on Sundays on Sunday just this one Sunday and then you you stay home from church you don't watch church online you don't spend time in your word you're so busy working to get this done so you you get it done and your boss is so pleased with you and then you you do it again and do it again and do it again and and then you and then you wonder why am I so crabby at my kids why am I so grumpy why am I so th- the this and that I didn't used to be like that, and that's because y- you paid so for something you thought was free. It was free at the beginning. It just took like one Sunday off. It was free at the beginning, but then slowly you started to pay, and you didn't even know it, and then. You just feel like, okay, um, and then you just couldn't get back home again, uh, emotionally home, that's what I, what I meant to say, or you tell your kids, we are going to church on Sunday, and then your, your son is like, oh, mom, we're having a soccer practice just this one Sunday, we're playing against so-and-so, and then you say, um, it's just one Sunday away from church, it's not going to be a big deal, and then you take that Sunday off, take him to his soccer game, and then the next Sunday, something else happens, and then your, your daughter wants to go to her friend, and you're like, okay, you can go, it's just one Sunday. And they, and then you, and then you start, um, so, and the more times you do that, God becomes lower and lower on the list, and it's not, and it's not even that, um, it's not even that watching church means that you're a better Christian or whatever, because you can watch church and be in the be in the kitchen or whatever, but it's your attention span to it that makes the difference. It's, it's the, it's the time that you can get to fill up on your word and, um, do all that stuff that makes a difference. And then you, you wonder why your kids are fighting more than they used to, why why you and your husband or your wife are fighting more than they used to, why are, are, is there trouble at work, um, the, the, and you can't, and you can't, um, deal with that trouble at work because you're just so stressed out and you're wondering what happened, the problem is you, you thought something was free, but it wasn't, you thought you wouldn't have to pay anything, but you did, and sometimes the payment, most times the payment isn't monetary at all, Some most times it's your sanity and your integrity and your self-respect, or Sometimes, um, say you ha- you're in high school, and you and you had a first boyfriend, and he's and he's hot, and you've been told by your parents, don't 
don't sleep with anyone unless you're married to them. You grew up in a Christian home, and you've been always told that, and you're like, oh, we, we're not doing anything, we're just, we're just hanging out together. And then, when you hang out together, you, you, you let him touch you, and it, and it feels so good, you're like, how could this be wrong? And then, and then you end up, um, slowly, and then you end up sleeping with him, and then you end up, like, paying more than you intended to pay. The price of sin is never apparent at first. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll say that again. The price of sin is never apparent at first. To see the true price of your sin, you have to wait um, sometimes years for the full effect for for the full effect to take hold. So you may not think that you're paying anything. You may not think you're hurting anyone, but the but the price that you end up paying will be so high that it'll be harder to get back home. And the Lord wants me to say that for those um, of you who have been, have been paying and have been paying and you thought something was free, but it was not. It cost your integrity. It cost your self-respect. It cost you uh, who you were. The Lord's saying, today is the day of restoration. Today is the day of hope. Today is the day of salvation. You are ne you are never too far from God. You you have never made too many mistakes for God to forgive you and for God to love you. And you may have thought some things were falsely were free, but they were but they were not. But God can restore. All of that you lost. And there's no need to feel shame. Shame comes from human understanding and feel, feeling a despair for being, for being human and being uh, what you did. Conviction comes from the Holy Spirit. So I sense... Yes, Lord. I sense somebody's being convicted today um, about something that they thought was free, but then they end up paying for it in the long run. And I just want to say to you, there's restoration and there's hope. And there's also people out there watching me today that... Um, um, they're thinking of doing something that they think is no big deal. They're thinking of uh, gossiping. They're thinking of um, um, just telling a little white lie with their uh, about that person to get the business deal, or they're thinking of doing something unsavory because they think it'll get them to what, where they want faster, but, um, is it worth the price? Is it worth the price? Um, I was talking to God about something the other day, and he said, uh, weigh the risk. He said, weigh the risk, and and I'm here to tell you the same thing. Whatever you're thinking of doing, whether it be, you know, moral or whatever it, whatever it be, the Lord wants me to tell you to weigh the risk. Is going out for lunch with that married man when you know he's after you um, worth it? Is it worth breaking up a family? Is it worth is it worth 
giving over your self-respect for his money or a, a half an hour of good sex? Is it worth it? Um, and that business deal that you're not sure of and the Lord is telling you not to take, but your friends are saying, Oh my gosh, this is such a good deal. Oh my gosh, this is low risk, but the Lord is saying to you, He's screaming at you, do not take that business deal. Is it worth your integrity? Is the money you'll make worth your integrity? Is, you know, is the money you make, you'll make worth your soul? He's, um, the Bible said, uh, um, a man gains the whole world but can lose his soul. Is it worth losing your soul, losing your self-respect, losing your family? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? So weigh the risk. A lot of people don't weigh, weigh the risk of their decisions. A lot of people, they make their decisions, they're like, okay, let's, let's do this. It's only a little lie, it's only a white lie, and nobody's going to know it. I'm just going to, you know, um, take that business deal and it's going to make me a lot of money. Or I'm just going to going to say I'm not married, which when I am. Um, because she's, that young girl is hot and I want her. But is it worth the risk of your family? Is it worth the risk of your ministry? Is it worth the risk? God has too much in store for you, for you to take something that is uh, falsely free into your life. And he's been screaming at some of you, do not do it. Like, the sign is so there. And even if he hasn't been screaming, there's a little thing in your spirit that says no. And everything around you says um, ye yes. And then everything, everyone around you is saying, do it, do it, do it. And then, and then, a part of you is saying, no, listen to that still small voice. That still small voice knows what you, what you ought to do. And he's given you that still small voice. That still small voice is his voice that he's given you to, to guide you through life. Um... I, I, um, they say, listen to your gut. Well, I say, um, it's a God uttered tracker, which means the, the words that come from your, from your gut are God uttered. It's not like basically your words, but if you're a child of God, his spirit comes into you and causes you to make decisions. Use that Spirit of God to make decisions. And if you're not sure, ask. Read your word. Talk to somebody who actually knows this. If somebody is about to make a detrimental financial decision that will ruin your life, and he's saying, talk to those around you who have been through it before. You have, this person has friends and people they can ask, but they're about to go off half-cocked and say, I don't need any advice. I can do whatever. And yes, you can, but how much are you willing to pay? Are you willing to, to lose your house for this deal? Are you willing to, you know, 
whatever for this deal. You, your integrity, money is not worth your integrity. So if, if this business deal or whatever business deal will cause you to lose your integrity, I would really caution you that because your integrity, your sense of wholeness, your self-esteem, your self-respect is worth everything. It's worth everything. And when you lose those, you can always make money, but when you lose those, it takes forever to get them back. It takes a lot of work and a lot of needless stress. So why go through the needless stress for just the hope of making all this money? So do your due diligence. Do your due diligence, sir or madam. Do your research. Talk to people about about what you're doing. Um, make sure that you have all the facts about whatever business deal or whatever. And if you don't know, ask. Do your research on this um, business deal through the internet. Talk to people before you make any decisions. Do your due diligence. There are times when God is going to tell you to to move, and that's it. You move. And there are times where he's going to tell you to slow down and do your due diligence and wait. Um, and there are times that he's going to tell you to stop. I call it the stoplight method, which there are sometimes where you want to do things and he'll tell you to stop. Don't think about that at all. That's dangerous. And there are some things that he's going to tell you, do it, but proceed with caution. And there are sometimes, and then when you do it and proceed with caution, do your due diligence, do your research, talk to people, all of that. Um, then you have more information and then you can go. And there are times where he's going to tell you to, to move, to go right away and he'll carry you. So, so is he telling you to stop? Is he telling you to go but proceed with caution or is he telling you to go so before you get into something that is falsely free just use the stoplight method and ask him lord are you telling me to stop just don't think about it anymore are you telling me to go to Proceed, go, but proceed with caution, or are you telling me to go full steam ahead and you'll be with me? And I think if we were to do that, um, we'd have a much better success in life. Some people are too cautious and they need to learn when God speaks just to move, and some people are, they just move without thinking. So we need to have a balance, and that's how we won't get into um, we won't get into the problem of dealing with someone thing who um, dealing with something or someone who who was falsely free that, that we end up paying, and we don't even know that we're paying. So mo most times, false freedom happen slowly. Like I said, with the uh, once a month free trial, you don't even know that your month was over. You're enjoying it so much that you don't even know that they're, they've started taking money out of your account. Or if the thing was bad and you don't like it, you don't even know that they've already taken not 10 bucks at your account. And, and you're like, there is no way now you can get that money back because that's how they trick you. 
they ask, they, have you ever noticed, they ask for your credit card information first, and they don't take it out right away, because they say it's a free trial, but after that month, they take it out, and you don't even realize that they've taken it out. Um, one time, I'll just tell you a quick story. One time, I, I, um, by accident, signed up for this streaming service, and, and, because I wanted to try it out, but I didn't, because I had signed up for the free ch trial about years before. And, um, so, but, um, my finances got a little hairy, so I cancelled it, right? And then, when my finances got a little bit better, I signed up for it again, expecting there to be another free trial. But, lo and behold, because I had signed up before, the free trial wasn't applicable to me, so I I just happened to look at my bank account and see that they took out the money and they and I must have clicked on for a year because they took out um they took out the money for the year um, membership and I was like oh no so. So I paid without even realizing that the free trial wasn't applicable to me. Um, so be careful, because um, nothing is ever free. You always have to pay something. Um, the, the, the question is, what are you willing to pay? And how much are you willing to pay, and before you do anything in business, in relationship, in whatever, weigh the risk, and there's there's a young lady or a young man out there listening to me today, um, who your friends are telling you that this person is bad news, and they, and they seem to be so sweet and so nice, but all these people are telling you that this person is bad news. So, do your due diligence, um, girl and man, man. Don't get yourself into a situation that you, um, would say no, would, um, be falsely free. Like, you think it's free, but then you have to pay in the long run with your self-respect. So, if there's a doubt, um, just don't do it. Your life is too precious uh, to do it. Maybe that person has a little bit of maturity. Maybe the Lord will bring you back to that person, or maybe... He has another person for you. It's not worth your integrity and self-respect. And not only are these people telling you that this person is bad news, you feel it. There are red flags everywhere. Or there are a tiny bit of red flags. He's nice, but he doesn't spend money. He doesn't seem to have money. And every time you go out... You have to pay, and you're, or he won't introduce you to his family for some reason. Pay attention in anything that is falsely free to the little red flags. They are always there. Not all, they are always there. Not only in relationships with guys and girls, but in business. Pay attention to the red, red flags. Don't look for them and scope them out, but if they're there, don't ignore them. Take note of them. 
And I'm not saying to pull out right away of, of fake business deals, but I'm saying take note of them and do your research. Because those red flags are from God usually telling you to stop and do your research, do your due diligence. Don't just see the dollar signs and that's it. Do your due diligence and know that whatever happens, um, know that if you do your due diligence and find out that that business deal is not good and everybody's doing it and you pull out and you feel like a, a, such a jerk because this is going to make you money and um, everybody else in the office is doing it and you're standing firm, know that God will back you in that. Know that there's even a more, a, a, a way that he's going to provide for you financially that you won't have to steal and lie and cheat or that won't, that won't seem fishy to you. If it, if anything seems fishy, it probably is. If anything is screaming with red flags, it probably is not good news. It's probably falsely free. What what I mean is, um, in the area of finances, it's it may it may be like you have to pay something, but but you may feel like like it's going to be more of a return, so I'll just pay this price, or I'll just, um, do this one fishy thing, because it's gonna, it's gonna reap me more in the long run, but usually, beloved, it only reaps you pain, it only reaps you stress, it only reaps you a lack of integrity, and to pick up the pieces from detrimental mistakes are so is so hard and I'd rather you not go through that and God would rather you not go through that he sent me to say beware of things that are free because you always have to pay something that's why this sermon is called falsely free I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys got something out of it. Thank you. Bye. And also on the same subject, but not, uh, not um, come completely the same subject, a lot of, um, there is someone out there who, who thinks they're just living life and, uh, being what they want to be and being, being who they are, living it up, and they're feeling free, but that freedom is false, and that freedom is costing them everything. That freedom is costing their self-respect. That freedom is costing them everything. And the Lord says, you don't have to live falsely free anymore. He says he wants to offer you real freedom, real life. The only thing that is free and you don't have to pay anything is salvation. Now, you may, you may have to pay, it may, it doesn't cost anything to get saved. All you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. But once you get saved, he'll take you through a process of giving up things. And you may feel like it's going to cost, but it's not going to cost you anything. It's not, no, it's not going to cost you as much as it would that it is 
it's not going to cost you as much as it is now. Your life is so important, beloved. Your life is so important, beloved, and um, so essential to God and his kingdom and his purpose and his plan. And he wants you to come in relationship with him. Um, a lot of pastors say, say this prayer after me or whatever. I, I am very strange. I don't believe that someone praying on your behalf, behalf and you, uh, repeating prayers, um, is, you know, it's, it's good, but I think God really hears people who pray for themselves. So, it like the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. So, if you want to be saved, all you have to do is say, God, or Lord Jesus, I believe in you, and I, I want to receive your salvation. Or j just say it in your own words. Just say it how you say it. Um, don't repeat after me, because those will be my words. You would just be repeating my words. The Lord wants to hear your heart today. The Lord wants to hear your words today. So just just say it in, in your own words. And he hears you. They don't have the perfect words, or you don't need you don't need something perfect. You don't need anything. But the Lord desperately wants to hear from you today. Thanks, guys. I love you. See you next time. I'm free, praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul is resting, it's such a blessing, praise God, hallelujah, I'm free. See you next time, guys. Bye.